Hello, and welcome to our lecture on the dynamic behavior of first order processes. A first order process is a process whose dynamic behavior can be modeled using a first order transfer function, as shown here, where u is the input and y is the output. Within the transfer function itself, k is the steady state gain and tau is the time constant. Now, the way various first order processes differ from each other is through their inputs. So, in this lecture, we will be going over various common inputs and how to incorporate this into the first order model. So, what are the common inputs that we will be discussing in this video? First is a step input, then ramp, rectangular pulse, sine wave, and an impulse input. So first is our step input. A step input is a sudden change in a process variable that can be approximated by just a step change of magnitude n, as shown in the graph here. Now the first step in incorporating this input into our overall model is to make this input a function of time, as shown on the left. U s of t equals m when t is greater than or equal to zero. Taking the Laplace transform of this function gives us u of s equals m over s. This allows us to plug it straight into the model I showed earlier, which is shown in the bottom left. Simplifying this model and then taking the inverse Laplace transform gives our output function as a function of time, which makes it very easy to model the dynamic response of our system to this step change. Now a helpful hint, you may see something called a unit step input. This means that the m value is equal to one. The next type of input that we're talking about is a ramp input. A ramp input is a relatively slow change up or down for a period of time, often termed drifting disturbances, and have a rate change that is approximately constant. This means we'll have another parameter we need to worry about, the slope of our input, a. Again, putting this input a function of time and Laplace transforming it, we will get u of s equals to a over s squared, as shown on the left. Plugging this into our first order model and taking the inverse Laplace transform will give us the output function shown on the bottom right. Now, when will we, when will we actually use this input in practice? When in industry will we see a ramp input? Well, Common industry ramp changes include feed composition and catalyst activity. Next is a rectangular input, which is a brief sudden change in a process variable that can be represented by a rectangular pulse. This is very similar to a step input as it jumps right up to a certain value at time equals to zero, but it comes back down to zero at a specific time, which we will be calling TW. Again, we will put this in to a function of time, Laplace transform it, and then plug it into our overall model. As you can see on the bottom, our final output function is a lot more complicated than the original unit step we talked about earlier. Next is a sinusoidal input, which is a periodic or cyclic disturbance. I'm sure everyone watching this video is familiar with a sine wave, I won't go into the details of that, but you will need to know the amplitude and the angular frequency in order to properly account for it into the final output function. Again, we will be doing the Laplace transform of the input function and plugging it into our first order model. However, in this case, there are a couple more steps required before we can do the final inverse Laplace transform into the output function in terms of t. Now, when will we see sinusoidal inputs in practice? Well, examples include variation temperatures and also electrical noise. The last input we'll be talking about is impulse input. Now, impulse inputs are very rare in practice and aren't often used, so I won't go into too much detail about it. But if you do have an impulse input, then you can model the output response using the function on the bottom left. 
Now, what happens if we want to use Simulink to model a first order process with these inputs? So in Simulink, to enter in your first order model, you will first need to input your transfer function. So if you go to library browser, you will see on the left, all these different categories of blocks you can put into your workspace. Go to continuous and you will see a block called transfer function. Drag and drop this into the workspace and you can double click it to change your values such as K and tau. For the example I'm going to do right now, we're going to assume K and tau are both equal to one. Hit okay. Then we'll also need some way to see what our output is. So go back to library browser and go to sinks. I always use the scope because the scope will just produce a graph of your output as a function of time. So connecting those two, now all we have left is our input. So if we go back to library browser and go to sources, we will find blocks for a wide variety of different types of inputs. So like the ones we discussed today, we have step, we have ramp, and we also can do sine wave. So let's just pretend that we're going to do a step input right now. So what I will do is drag the arrow from step input into the transfer function, and you will have the complete model connected. But you want to make sure your step input has the correct parameters. So double click your step input, and you will see this list of parameters that you can change. Step time is just the time when the step change takes place. In the example we looked at before, this was at time equal to zero. The initial value was just the value of that response variable before the step change. Again, in our example we looked at, this was zero. And then the final value is what value is the step change to? So for example, our unit step, step to a value of one. We'll pretend like we're doing a unit step here, so we'll keep this as one. And then sample time, you don't usually have to change, so you can just leave that as zero. Hit OK. So now that everything is set up the way we want to, all we have to do is hit Run, and then double click on the scope to see our great process response to that step change. Now for the other inputs, double click Ramp. It'll just ask you to change the slope, the start time, and the initial output. And then for sine wave, it will ask you to do the same parameters we discussed previously, such as amplitude and frequency, but also phase and bias if you have those parameters available. Now, you might have noticed that I did not include any input for the rectangular pulse that we discussed. That is because Simulink doesn't automatically have a block for it because you can build it using the step change blocks. So to do that, Let's just see what a step change looks like. Let's pretend that we're going to start this rectangular pulse at time equal to five. Let's say at first it was at zero and we're going to step change it to five. So let's put in another source, a little scope, and let's just look at what this is. So as you can see, it goes up at time five to five, and it stays there for the remainder of the period. So to do the rectangular pulse, we will somehow need to subtract off this to bring it back down to zero to complete the rectangle. So we need to go back to sources, add another step change, and we will also need to add in a math operator, we'll need to add in the sum. And we'll take this arrow, put on this side, and then this arrow on this side. And we're going to make this an identical step change, but we're going to make this at time 10. Initial value of 0, final value of 5. But we're going to want to subtract the second one from the first one. So let's just double click and change the one of the signs to minus. Now, as you can see, that made the second one 
subtract from the first one. Let's hit run. And there you go. So that second step change, since we subtracted it from the first, it brought back that five to zero at time 10 and gave us the rectangular pulse that we were wanting. So I hope you learned something in today's video and please comment with any questions you have. Thank you.